In news out of the UK, a second person has reportedly been cured of HIV. The patient, who's based in London, has reportedly been HIV-free now for 18 months. During that time, it's said that he did not take any medication. The treatment in the UK is raising hopes that it'll help doctors secure a cure for the virus in the future. Earlier, my colleague Michelle Craig spoke to ENCA's UK correspondent, Ollie Barrett. The London patient, as he is known, proves that the Berlin patient was no anomaly, and that's why doctors are so excited about this particular case. The London patient is so named because he is a patient from London, but also because he doesn't want his identity to be revealed, so we will continue to refer to him as that. He is a man who was suffering from uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, advanced Hodgkin's lymphoma, and as part of the treatment for that Hodgkin's disease, he was extended some pretty rigorous chemotherapy but also a stem cell transplant as part of that treatment. Now the stem cell transplant that the London patient received came from a person who had a gene that shows resistance to HIV. So at the time that this was all carried out doctors were interested to see whether that resistant gene would take hold in the London patient and therefore uh, lead to his HIV receding and that appears to have taken place three years or so on from the stem cell transplant and, and as you were saying 18 months without HIV medication there is no sign at the moment of HIV uh, in this man's system. Doctors are being cautious about calling it a cure or saying that this man has been cured. There is the possibility of course that in the future HIV could return but for now the London patient is HIV clear um, uh, and doctors are, are very excited about this development. Yeah, and that excitement uh, is similar to what we saw in the Berlin patient 10 years ago. And that's what doctors now need to figure out, isn't it? Why does this procedure, uh, this bone marrow transplant using uh, someone that has this HIV resistant gene, why does it work in some people and not in others? That's exactly right. And uh, one of the reasons that uh, doctors and experts are urging caution here is that what they are saying is that what we've had now is two cases that have proven that you can uh, remove effectively HIV from a patient and lead to a, a so-called cure. Let's put that cure in inverted commas for now. Uh, but this is an incredibly complicated process of treatment that these uh, two patients have been through. Similar kinds of uh, ideas. The, the Berlin patient was being treated actually for a very aggressive leukemia. But the idea, the principle is the same. And what doctors are saying is that um, because the process that the London patient went through, for example, advanced, uh, rigorous, and um, pretty robust uh, period of chemotherapy, and then this stem cell transplant, you can't be, of course, going around the world um, giving that treatment to anyone who has HIV. The, uh, the very uh, difficult chemotherapy would be far too much for uh, most patients to go through uh, when there are other solutions or treatments, shall we say, on the market for HIV. Doctors are saying this is not a practical way to treat millions of HIV patients at all. So it's not going to be the solution for millions of people who do have HIV around the world. What doctors are saying is that they're going to look at this case and the Berlin patient as well and try and take all the details, the evidence, um, the, the science behind it and work on perhaps uh, other treatments for HIV, use this information to develop further treatments for HIV. They're very excited in that regard, but they're urging caution that it would simply not be practical or possible uh, to treat other HIV patients in the way that these two patients have been treated. You can just imagine uh, someone living with HIV watching an insert like this, and you can't help but feel optimistic. But what are scientists saying about just how attainable this is, perhaps the time frames involved, how much money it will cost? Well, the time frames, I think we should expect that this is not going to be something that's going to appear rapidly on the market, even if doctors are able to harness all of this information and work towards some kind of solution that would work for other HIV patients. Of course, there would be a very long 
testing process uh, that would need to be carried out under very strict conditions. It takes a long time to get any drugs and solutions to market, of course, because of that testing process when uh, everything is needed to be experimented with and made sure that it can be safe for other patients to be used. So I think doctors are urging caution also with regards to the time frames here. This is not something that's going to immediately appear on the market. That said, it's very useful information for researchers and doctors around the world to be able to take a look at, to be able to extract um, some trends from, to be able to extract and, and extrapolate some information from so that uh, it can be used to work towards a potential cure for HIV. Now, although the London patient's been in remission for over a year, Professor Salim Abdul Karim says it's too early to say he's been cured of HIV. Professor Karim says this case will be helpful in the future in finding the cure for HIV. Now, we already have in the world a patient who has been functionally cured. For the last 12 years, he has had no detectable virus, and that's a patient who is referred to as the Berlin patient where some 12 years ago he had uh, a surgical procedure where his bone marrow was replaced and the bone marrow he received from the donor was a very rare kind of donor where that donor had a gene defect that does not allow HIV to infect CD4 cells. So it's that particular a change in the bone marrow that leads to the creation of, of blood cells that cannot get, get infected by HIV that led to the Berlin patient being cured. In the London patient, this newest patient, he has had no virus detectable now for about 18 months. So it's still early days. We would prefer to wait for about three to five years, but for now he has he has all the evidence that suggests that he does not have the virus. Okay. Now, but as I said, it's still tentative, but we can call it a cure for now. So we are a long way from a cure. Uh, we don't have any specific strategy that we know works in curing HIV. These two individuals, the Berlin patient and the London patient, give us some ideas that we might be able to pursue, but they're really not practical, they're not implementable, and they're not uh, treatments that we can regard as something that we could implement anytime soon. So we can go on the basis that there is no cure. The uh, research that's being undertaken, including research we are undertaking here in Durban, is trying to give us clues as to how we might approach a cure.